Hey everyone, hope you all are doing well. Today we're going to be reading 1 Chronicles 26, Luke 8, and John 1. Now let's pray before we get into the Word. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for giving us this day that we might spend with you and get to know you a little bit more. Thank you so much for all the blessings that you poured out on us that we don't deserve, allowing us to be a part of your perfect purpose. Thank you so much for sending your son to die for our sins that we might have this relationship with you and share in your glory. Please guide us with your Holy Spirit to open up our hearts and our minds to anything you would have us to know in your word today. Please forgive us of our sins and lead us away from temptation, that we might be more like you and glorify you in your kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, let's get started. First Chronicles 26 The Divisions of the Gatekeepers From the Korahites Meshelamiah, son of Kor, one of the sons of Asaph. Meshelamiah had sons, Zechariah, the firstborn, Jedael, the second, Zebediah, the third, Jathniel, the fourth, Elam, the fifth, Jehohanan, the sixth, and Elihonai, the seventh. Obed-Edom also had sons, Shemaiah the firstborn, Jehozabad the second, Joah the third, Sakar the fourth, Nathanael the fifth, Amiel the sixth, Issachar the seventh, and Ulathai the eighth. For God had blessed Obed Edom. Obed Edom's son, Shemaiah, also had sons who were leaders in their father's family because they were very capable men. The sons of Shemaiah, Othni, Raphael, Obed, and Elzabad. His relatives, Elihu and Semachiah, were also able men. All these were descendants of Obed-Edom. They and their sons and their relatives were capable men with the strength to do the work. Descendants of Obed-Edom, 62 in all. Meshelamiah had sons and relatives who were able men, 18 in all. Hosa the Merarite had sons, Shimrai the first, although he was not the firstborn, his father had appointed him the first. Hilkiah the second, Tabaliah the third, and Zechariah the fourth. The sons and relatives of Hosa were thirteen in all. These divisions of the gatekeepers, through their leaders, had duties for ministering in the temple of the Lord, just as their relatives had. Lots were cast for each gate, according to their families, young and old alike. The lot for the east gate fell to Shelemiah. Then lots were cast for his son Zechariah, a wise counselor, and the lot for the north gate fell to him. The lot for the south gate fell to Obed-Edom, and the lot for the storehouse fell to his sons. The lots for the west gate and the Sheleketh gate on the upper road fell to Shupam and Hosa. Guard was alongside of guard. There were six Levites a day on the east, four a day on the north four a day on the south, and two at a time at the storehouse. As for the court to the west, there were four at the road, and two at the court itself. These were the divisions of the gatekeepers, who were descendants of Korah and Merari. Their fellow Levites were in charge of the treasuries of the house of God and the treasuries for the dedicated things. The descendants of Ladan, who were Gershonites through Ladan, and who were heads of families belonging to Ladan the Gershonite, were Jehili, the sons of Jehili, Zetham, and his brother Joel. They were in charge of the treasuries of the temple of the Lord. From the Amramites, the Izharites, the Hebronites, and the Uzielites, Shubael, a descendant of Gershom, son of Moses, was the official in charge of the treasuries. His relatives drew Eliezer, Rehabiah his son, Jeshiah his son, Joram his son, Zikri, his son, and Shelemith, his son. Shelemith and his relatives were in charge of all the treasuries for the things dedicated by King David, by the heads of families who were the commanders of thousands and commanders of hundreds, and by the other army commanders. Some of the plunder taken in battle they dedicated for the repair of the temple of the Lord, and everything dedicated by Samuel the seer and by Saul, son of Kish, Abner, son of Ner, and Joab, son of Zeruiah, and all the other dedicated things were in the care of Shelemith and his relatives. From the Izharites, 
Kenaniah and his sons were assigned duties away from the temple as officials and judges over Israel. From the Hebronites, Hashabiah and his relatives, 1,700 able men, were responsible in Israel west of the Jordan for all the work of the Lord and for the king's service. As for the Hebronites, Jeriah was their chief according to the genealogical records of their families. In the fortieth year of David's reign, a search was made in the records, and capable men among the Hebronites were found at Jazer in Gilead. Jeriah had 2,700 relatives, who were able men and heads of families, and King David put them in charge of the Reubenites, the Gadites, and the half-tribe of Manasseh for every matter pertaining to God and for the affairs of the king. Luke 8 After this, Jesus traveled about from one town and village to another, proclaiming the good news of the kingdom of God. The twelve were with him, and also some women, who had been cured of evil spirits and diseases. Mary, called Magdalene, from whom seven demons had come out. Joanna, the wife of Chusa, the manager of Herod's household. Susanna, and many others. These women were helping to support them out of their own means. While a large crowd was gathering and people were coming to Jesus from town after town, he told this parable. A farmer went out to sow his seed. As he was scattering the seed, some fell along the path. It was trampled on and the birds ate it up. Some fell on rocky ground, and when it came up, the plants withered because they had no moisture. Other seed fell among thorns, which grew up with it and choked the plants. Still other seed fell on good soil. It came up and yielded a crop, a hundred times more than was sown. When he said this, he called out, Whoever has ears to hear, let them hear. His disciples asked him what this parable meant. He said, The knowledge of the secrets of the kingdom of God has been given to you, but to others I speak in parables, so that, though seeing, they may not see, though hearing, they may not understand. This is the meaning of the parable. The seed is the word of God. Those along the path are the ones who hear, and then the devil comes and takes away the word from their hearts, so that they may not believe and be saved. Those on the rocky ground are the ones who receive the word with joy when they hear it, but they have no root. They believe for a while, but in the time of testing they fall away. The seed that fell among thorns stands for those who hear, but as they go on their way, they are choked by life's worries, riches, and pleasures, and they do not mature. But the seed on good soil stands for those with a noble and good heart, who hear the word, retain it, and by persevering produce a crop. No one lights a lamp and hides it in a clay jar or puts it under a bed. Instead they put it on a stand, so that those who come in can see the light. For there is nothing hidden that will not be disclosed, and nothing concealed that will not be known or brought out into the open. Therefore consider carefully how you listen. Whoever has will be given more. Whoever does not have, even what they think they have will be taken from them. Now Jesus' mother and brothers came to see him, but they were not able to get near him because of the crowd. Someone told him, Your mother and brothers are standing outside wanting to see you. He replied, My mother and brothers are those who hear God's word and put it into practice. One day Jesus said to his disciples, Let us go over to the other side of the lake. So they got into a boat and set out. As they sailed, he fell asleep. A squall came down on the lake, so that the boat was being swamped and they were in great danger. The disciples went and woke him, saying, Master, Master, we're going to drown. He got up and rebuked the wind and the raging waters. The storm subsided and all was calm. Where is your faith? he asked his disciples. In fear and amazement, they asked one another, Who is this? He commands even the winds and the water, and they obey him. They sailed to the region of the Gerasenes, which is across the lake from Galilee. When Jesus stepped ashore, he was met by a demon-possessed man from the town. For a long time this man had not worn clothes or lived in a house, but had lived in the tombs. When he saw Jesus, he cried out and fell at his feet, shouting at the top of his voice, What do you want with me, Jesus, Son of the Most High God? I beg you, don't torture me. For Jesus had commanded the impure spirit to come out of the man. Many times it had seized him, 
and though he was chained hand and foot and kept under guard, he had broken his chains and had been driven by the demon into solitary places. Jesus asked him, What is your name? Legion, he replied, because many demons had gone into him. And they begged Jesus repeatedly not to order them to go into the abyss. A large herd of pigs was feeding there on the hillside. The demons begged Jesus to let them go into the pigs, and he gave them permission. When the demons came out of the man, they went into the pigs, and the herd rushed down the steep bank into the lake and was drowned. When those tending the pigs saw what had happened, they ran off and reported this in the town and countryside, and the people went out to see what had happened. When they came to Jesus, they found the man from whom the demons had gone out, sitting at Jesus' feet, dressed and in his right mind, and they were afraid. Those who had seen it told the people how the demon-possessed man had been cured. Then all the people of the region of the Gerasenes asked Jesus to leave them, because they were overcome with fear. So he got into the boat and left. The man from whom the demons had gone out begged to go with him, but Jesus sent him away, saying, Return home and tell how much God has done for you. So the man went away and told all over town how much Jesus had done for him. Now when Jesus returned, a crowd welcomed him, for they were all expecting him. Then a man named Jairus, a synagogue leader, came and fell at Jesus' feet, pleading with him to come to his house, because his only daughter, a girl of about twelve, was dying. As Jesus was on his way, the crowds almost crushed him. And a woman was there, who had been subject to bleeding for twelve years, but no one could heal her. She came up behind him and touched the edge of his cloak, and immediately her bleeding stopped. Who touched me? Jesus asked. When they all denied it, Peter said, Master, the people are crowding and pressing against you. But Jesus said, Someone touched me. I know that power has gone out from me. Then the woman, seeing that she could not go unnoticed, came trembling and fell at his feet. In the presence of all the people, she told why she had touched him and how she had been instantly healed. Then he said to her, Daughter, your faith has healed you. Go in peace. While Jesus was still speaking, someone came from the house of Jairus, the synagogue leader. Your daughter is dead, he said. Don't bother the teacher any more. Hearing this, Jesus said to Jairus, Don't be afraid. Just believe, and she will be healed. When he arrived at the house of Jairus, he did not let anyone go in with him except Peter, John, and James, and the child's father and mother. Meanwhile, all the people were wailing and mourning for her. Stop wailing, Jesus said. She is not dead, but asleep. They laughed at him, knowing that she was dead. But he took her by the hand and said, My child, get up. Her spirit returned, and at once she stood up. Then Jesus told them to give her something to eat. Her parents were astonished, but he ordered them not to tell anyone what had happened. John 1 in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. There was a man sent from God, whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify concerning that light, so that through him all might believe. He himself was not the light, he came only as a witness to the light. The true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision or a husband's will, but born of God. The Word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only Son, who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. John testified concerning him. He cried out, saying, This is the one I spoke about when I said, He who comes after me has surpassed me, because he was before me. Out of his fullness we have all received grace in place of grace, already given. For the law was given through Moses, grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God but the one and only Son, who is himself God, 
and his in closest relationship with the Father has made him known. Now this was John's testimony when the Jewish leaders in Jerusalem sent priests and Levites to ask him who he was. He did not fail to confess, but confess freely, I am not the Messiah. They asked him, Then who are you? Are you Elijah? He said, I am not. Are you the prophet? He answered, No. Finally they said, Who are you? Give us an answer to take back to those who sent us. What do you say about yourself? John replied in the words of Isaiah the prophet, I am the voice of one calling in the wilderness. Make straight the way for the Lord. Now the Pharisees who had been sent questioned him, Why then do you baptize if you are not the Messiah, nor Elijah, nor the prophet? I baptize with water, John replied, but among you stands one you do not know. He is the one who comes after me, the straps of whose sandals I am not worthy to untie. This all happened at Bethany, on the other side of the Jordan where John was baptizing. The next day, John saw Jesus coming toward him and said, Look, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. This is the one I meant when I said, A man who comes after me has surpassed me because he was before me. I myself did not know him, but the reason I came baptizing with water was that he might be revealed to Israel. Then John gave this testimony. I saw the Spirit come down from heaven as a dove and remain on him, and I myself did not know him. But the one who sent me to baptize with water told me, The man on whom you see the Spirit come down and remain is the one who will baptize with the Holy Spirit. I have seen and I testify that this is God's chosen one. The next day, John was there again with two of his disciples. When he saw Jesus passing by, he said, Look, the Lamb of God. When the two disciples heard him say this, they followed Jesus. Turning around, Jesus saw them following and asked, What do you want? They said, Rabbi, which means teacher, where are you staying? Come, he replied, and you will see. So they went and saw where he was staying, and they spent that day with him. It was about four in the afternoon. Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, was one of the two who heard what John had said and who had followed Jesus. The first thing Andrew did was to find his brother Simon and tell him, We have found the Messiah, that is, the Christ, and he brought him to Jesus. Jesus looked at him and said, You are Simon, son of John. You will be called Cephas, which when translated is Peter. The next day, Jesus decided to leave for Galilee. Finding Philip, he said to him, Follow me. Philip, like Andrew and Peter, was from the town of Bethsaida. Philip found Nathanael and told him, We have found the one Moses wrote about in the law, and about whom the prophets also wrote, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. Nazareth? Can anything good come from there? Nathanael asked. Come and see, said Philip. When Jesus saw Nathanael approaching, he said of him, Here truly is an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. How do you know me? Nathanael asked. Jesus answered, I saw you while you were still under the fig tree before Philip called you. Then Nathanael declared, Rabbi, you are the Son of God, you are the King of Israel. Jesus said, You believe because I told you I saw you under the fig tree. You will see greater things than that. He then added, Very truly I tell you, you will see heaven open, and the angels of God ascending and descending on the Son of Man. Thanks for joining and listening today. If you have any questions, leave them down here in the comments section, and I'll be making some videos where I go through some of those questions, show you some of the questions that I had, and maybe we can find some answers or even dive into it together. Thanks, guys. Hit the like and subscribe, and come back for more. All right, guys. Take it easy. Bye. God bless.